Hi. I'm going to talk about why I use back-end data and why it's important to use third-party third tools to do it. Basically, with the DX Lab, you could see that it was largely about exploration. Back, the, the, the canned reports that come with software, whether it's Google Analytics or, or our library applications, are about reporting. They're not about exploring. It, you can explore with third-party pr products. You can't explore with the canned reports. Somebody said there's a use for canned reports, putting them in the can. <laughs> this is a classic preset report, which shows that even Mr. Google can't necessarily get it right. This is, shows the months, you can, the, 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 the time period you can select. 28 days and 30 days. There's more at the bottom, but there's no 31 days. I would have thought there were more months with 31 days than there were with 28. Yes, Google Analytics does allow me to select whatever time period I want, but this canned report doesn't come with 31 days. I use, tab I use Tableau, which is a third party product, and I can choose the exact time I want any time from days to years. I can also compile a table, duplicate the sheet and produce a chart, and change the chart until I find which one best conveys what I want to show. And there are three of the options there. Moving from Google, to Primo, which is our discovery layer application. The Primo word search report segments it by letter of the alphabet. Starts with S, goes down to A. Now, it's quite useful to use this report if you want to work out that sh people put in a whole lot of variations of ships. Ship, plural, the singular, ships, plural, ships with a capital letter, ships without a capital letter, sailing ships, steam ships. But if you want to work out which are the most commonly used terms overall, segmented by letter of the alphabet is not terribly helpful. Using Tableau, and look, I realise that this is all very data heavy and you can't see a great deal very clearly, but I can sort by all the, the, the letters inside, the, the terms that are used from inside the library, from outside the library. I can segment by which tabs, so that if people choose pictures, they use one set of terms. If they use maps, they use another set of terms. And, or I can aggregate them. Primo has added some new options. They might have heard some of the complaints. Or oh, Ex Libris, who's the, the manufacturer of, of Primo. They have added some new options. In one, the pie chart. Pie chart simply repeats the absolute numbers. Why have a pie chart and a table showing you exactly the same thing? On the other side, we've got the top five options. Using a third party product, I can do, make a table, change it from absolute to percentage, and put the percentages on, which is a little bit more useful than that. Personally, I wouldn't use a pie chart for that many segments. Bad, not, not useful. It's actually a lot easier to understand if you use a bar chart. Using Tableau, I can also change the time period I want so that I'm in fact showing three years, not just one year. And it also shows how quickly, shows two of the facilities in Tableau that I can change very quickly using 
the year, change the, the time period covered, and it also provides me with a, list, a clear list of options to use for the charts. Slightly better than being given a chart that simply report, repeats the information in the tablet. It's also possible to expand and see a new level of detail. In this case, all the refinements, and all the refinements in this case are of the facets people use. It's interesting to see that because in detail, because what the chart does is aggregate a year's worth of, of facets. It just says that topic is used so much more than online or whatever. What it doesn't show you is that within topic, people don't just use, and the reference staff when I told them this said, oh yeah, we knew that. Yeah, but it's, easy, it's interesting to see that people don't just use one facet, they add refinements. They go through from music to, as a topic, to a genre, to a time period. They refine and refine and refine. You can see how much of that is just one facet as against multiple facets. People don't do what the charts which aggregate show you. They do different things and you've got to drill down and you've got to use a third party product to be able to do that because that's not what the canned report shows you. And in fact it's also useful because the software providers sometimes start and stop things. So that again if you've got an aggregate that covers a period where there's been a change in this you'll get the wrong answer if you look at an aggregate year, even an aggregate month. But an aggregate year will show you the wrong answer because the software provider has stopped doing that. Really helpful. In some cases, in fact, no canned report exists. Wherever there's free text, there's the dreaded dirty data. In our case, our patron registration form, which comes out of Voyager, which is the catalogue, both the postcode and the suburb are free text fields. The Victorian registered users, the postcode should start with a three. And why are Victorian registered postcodes starting with a three important? Because that's what You've got to be a Victorian registered user to use our online databases off-site. And the publishers are very sniffy about this and they don't like people from outside the defined area using them. If you look at that closely, <coughs> you'll see that in this case the postcode's wrong. The, the suburb is right. So, but no post, no canned report runs this. You've got to create your own report to do it. And sorry about where the box is. The box should in fact be above this. It should be on suburb because originally with a form it said city and people were putting in Melbourne and their postcode. We changed it to suburb slash city and we stopped having so many errors. Now, it's not necessarily easy to create these reports. You need to have an understanding of what the database looks like and how the linkages are made between the tables in the database. And, not, and just relying on how the application, in this case, Crystal Re Business Objects, links things, they will often do it on date, which is not right. So you do need to understand the business and the back-end database to be able to run these reports. It's not a plug-and-play situation. You also need to do work to create and create the data. It, for example, for us to be able to work on the online, on the open access collection use, to do something like 
was done with people using the collection, we actually had to barcode the open access collection, which hasn't been done until we had a new member of staff, who knows who he is, um, who came on site and we actually got the material barcoded and it's checked out to a service point. So whilst, and this is something that is an ongoing thing and we thank the people who do that task because it was an added task for them and we need to know the limits of the data because in our case we don't make we don't retain a link between the patron and the data uh, and the item usage we know how much how many times an item has been used and how much how many items a patron has used not including the open access collection we record the use of the closed stack collections but we don't record to a patron or count to a patron the use of open access collections. They're checked out to service points. So to use back-end data to explore you do need to know something about the business of the organisation, how the databases work and to have fun. Okay.